Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovalt and in this video I'm going to be going over how to write the molecular complete ionic and net ionic equation for uh, copper 2 acetate reacting with hydrogen sulfide which is going to yield a black solid. So let's get into this. All right so uh, first thing you notice is that they're not giving us formulas so uh, what you need to do is you need to go from the formula to the name. And so uh, if you're not familiar with that, or if you're a little bit rusty, I have a video on naming or have several videos on naming ionic compounds and how to go from the formula to the name and name to the formula. So if you want a, a review of that, please see my videos. I have them linked in the dis uh, description. Um, so uh, what do you do? So here uh, we have an ionic substance and what we need to do here is uh, go backwards. So what you need to realize is that the name of your ionic substance comes from the name of the ion. So if you know the two names of the ions, you're just putting those together for the name of the substance. So here we're going backwards. So the two parts of the name are the two, two ions. So we have copper two, which is your copper two ion, your, uh, your uh, has a plus two charge. So the two, the Roman numeral, here, Roman numeral uh, gives you the charge on the copper. It's not the number of coppers in your substance. It's just the charge that's on the copper atoms or ions. Um, and then you have the acetate ion. So you have the copper two ion, the acetate ion. So we'll need to write the formula and the charges for those. So that's the first thing to do. So uh, copper two, so copper, oops, I don't know why I did that. So we have the symbol for copper, so Cu, and then we know it has a plus two charge because of the Roman numeral, so two plus. So that's our copper ion. The acetate ion is a polyatomic ion, and you need to know what the uh, polyatomic ions are. I'm sure your teacher is giving you some sort of sheet uh, or handout with the uh, common polyatomic ions. Maybe uh, your teacher wants you to memorize those. I have a, another video that goes over polyatomic ions. I have a couple of them, uh, part one and two, and it go, they go over how to memorize the polyatomic ions. What are the patterns to remember? That'll help you memorize them. So again, that's gonna be linked in the description. Um, so acetate, we need to know acetate. Acetate ion is C2, oh, oops. Keep making mistakes today. So that's C2 H2 or H3 O2 and it has a minus charge. So now that we have the two ions and their formulas, we know the formulas, we have the charges, now we can put that into a formula. And when you're putting them together in a formula, you want a balanced charge. So here you've got negative and you've got two positive, one negative, two positive. So I need two acetate ions to balance the copper two, uh, the two plus charge on the copper two ion. So another way you could do that is to do the crisscross method. So I take the two of the charge here, the number of the charge, I'm gonna put it as a subscript over here, and I'm gonna take the number one of the charge and put it over there as a subscript. We don't write the ones, so it's just gonna be Cu, and then since I have two uh, acetate ions, I need parentheses, so C2H3O2, and then the two on the outside. So there's my two acetate ions. We put parentheses, whenever we have uh, polyatomic ions, we have more than one polyatomic ion in our uh, formula, we need to use parentheses. If we only have one polyatomic ion, you don't use parentheses. Okay, so here's our first substance. What about hydrogen sulfide? Well, hydrogen sulfide, that, that sounds like a uh, molecular substance. So here we have hydrogen and we have sulfide. So that means that our substance has a hydrogen and a sulfur in it. So that's a binary substance. So we're gonna add that. So we have H for hydrogen and we have sulfide, the ending 
is added in a molecular substance. That means that we're having sulfur and there's one sulfur. So that would be H S. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> remember here, uh, when you have hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen sulfide here, um, if this is a, it was an ionic substance, uh, you'd have a uh, sulfur with a two negative charge and hydrogen would be the H plus. And so here you have H2S. So H2S is the formula for hydrogen sulfide. Um, and then now we're going to write the formula. So, so here hydrogen sulfide and we have our copper two nitrate. And so how do we figure out what the, uh, what the products are? So here, what we can do is, again, we could treat this as if it's ions, and then we can do a double displacement. So here, the double displacement would be the inside ions and the outside ions. And so let's, let's do that. So, so we can treat this like an ionic substance. We could treat this like a, uh, an acid, if you will, because we have H2, right? And so we have uh, H2 and S. So if H2 is first, uh, that indicates an acid. So we could treat this like an acid. And so this would break apart into ions upon reaction. Um, and so then this would become H2, the, the hydrogen would come with the, the acid ion and the sulfur would, the sulfide ion would come with the, the copper. So we can do it that way too. So here we're going to have the copper combined with the sulfur here. And then we have the acetate going to combine with the H2. And so when we put these together, we want to make sure that the charge is balanced. So the copper two uh, plus is going to go with a negative two. The sulfide ion is going to have a negative two. So we can put those together, it'd be one, one to one. So that'd be C-U-S. And then the acetate is a negative one charge. And so that's going to go with the H plus. So that's going to be a one to one. So that's going to be H. And we're going to put the H in front because that's going to create what is called acetic acid. So we're going to put H in front. That would be your acetic hydrogen. And so then we do the C2H3O2. And so there we have our, our reactants and products, the formulas. So now we need to do is balance the equation and make sure that we uh, identify what the uh, states of matter are. And so here um, we have one copper, one copper. So that's balanced. We have two acetates here. Uh, we only have one acetate part here. So we're going to need to put a two here and we have two hydrogen. So now we have the two hydrogen here. So that's balanced and we have one sulfur and one sulfur. So that's balanced. So now we have our balanced equation. And so now let's write the, uh, the states of matter. So acetates. So it, to know whether you have a solid or if you have aqueous in, for an ionic substance, you can use your solubility rules or a solubility table. I'm sure uh, your teacher has given you one, uh, or you could easily find one on the internet. Uh, so here on the solubility rules, the acetates, uh, anything that is an acetate is going to be soluble. There's no exceptions. So this is going to be soluble. So that's aqueous. And uh, hydrogen sulfide is actually a gas. It's one of the gases you should know. Um, so H2S, uh, think of it as like kind of, um, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, sulfide is going to be a gas. It's a light molecule. I was just trying to think of an example of another molecule, like, you know, carbon dioxide is a gas. It's kind of a light molecule. 
uh, but not quite the same thing. Um, but this is a gas. So uh, H2S is a gas. Uh, we have copper sulfide, copper two sulfide. Uh, if we look on our solubility rules, what do we? What does our solubility rules say about sulfides? Where's the sulfides at? Sulfates, chlorides. Uh, let's see. Oh, it says all salts that contain S two minus are insoluble except for group one, group two elements. So that would be your uh, alkali metals and your alkaline earth metals. Uh, we don't have those. And the other exception would be ammonium. So we don't have any of those exceptions. So this is insoluble. So that's going to be a solid. And we have acetic acid. So the important thing about this one is we have to realize that this uh, is a weak acid. And the difference between a weak acid and a strong acid is that a strong acid is one that's going to uh, ionize completely in solution. So uh, practically 100% of it is going to be in the form of H plus ions and your, uh, your anion which is going, in this case, is your um, acetic acid. So if it was a strong acid, like, say, uh, hydrochloric acid, it'd be H plus ions, and your chloride ions would be completely separated. There would be none of it would be together. So, but weak acids uh, don't do that. Weak acids hardly uh, ionize to form their ions. So there's a itty-bitty tiny amount will ionize and become H plus, and the anion, um, but by large, uh, most of it is going to stay together in the molecular form. So since this is a weak acid, this is not going to come apart very much. It's actually gonna stay in this form. It's not gonna break apart into H plus and acetate ion. A little bit will, but it'll mostly stay in this form. So this is gonna be dissolved in water, but it's gonna stick together in one molecule. So this is aqueous. But we got to realize that it's going to stay together. It's not really going to. It's not really going to come apart. Okay, that'll be important when we do our complete ionic and net ionic equations. Okay, so we have our balanced molecular equation. Okay, now we can do the complete ionic equation. So the complete ionic equation is where you separate everything that is ionic and uh, aqueous. So if it's aqueous and it's ionic, then you can uh, separate those because in reality, those ions are really not together. So they are floating around in solution. So anything that is uh, supposed to be floating around separate, we separate those ions. Anything that is either a gas, a liquid, or a solid, we keep together. Also, what I just said is uh, your weak acids and your weak bases uh, are going to stay together. We're not going to separate those. Okay, so uh, when we write this one, we're going to write uh, Cu2 plus aqueous. And so when you write the ions, notice that I am writing the uh, charge. When you have them in their formulas, you're not putting the charge of the ions, but when you separate them, you write the charge. And next, we're going to have our acetate. Notice I have a, a subscript two. That means I have two acetate ions. Whenever you have a subscript that's telling you how many ions you have, that's gonna become a coefficient. So we're gonna write that as a two there, and then we're gonna write our acetate ion. So C2H3O2 minus. And so here we have our two acid ions. We're not gonna keep the subscript because the subscript, if we kept the subscript, that would be like saying that the two ions are stuck together in some sort of molecule, and that's not really what's happening. So that subscript two just indicates the number of ions we have in our ionic formula. And so we're gonna separate those because these ions are not stuck together. They're actually separated floating around, and the ratio is that for every one copper ion that's floating around 
uh, you have to capacitate ions that are floating around because we're going to balance the charge. The charge is neutral. And so here, this is a gas. So we're not going to separate that. That's going to stay together. H2S gas. And uh, you're probably wondering why this is named hydrogen sulfide. So it's named hydrogen sulfide mainly because of IUPAC rules and common naming and things like that. So this was accepted name for, for hydrogen sulfide. It could be called dihydrogen sulfide as well. Uh, it's a molecular substance, uh, but it can react in the same way as an ionic substance here. So, uh, so FYI. Um, so here, <clears throat> we're going to do the same thing with our product. So we have our copper two sulfate, or I'm sorry, uh, copper two sulfide. That's the solid. We're going to keep that together. So CUS solid. And then this we're going to keep together because it's a weak acid. So 2HC2H3O2 aqueous. So aqueous doesn't mean that it's dissolved. It means, oh, let me back up. It doesn't mean that it's separated into ions. It just means that it's dissolved in water. But this whole thing is together dissolved in water. It's like if you took uh, sugar and sugar is uh, C6H12O6. You threw that in water, it dissolves, it would become aqueous, but the atoms are not going to fall apart. So this is, even though this is an acid and it can ionize, for the most part, this stays together. So we're just going to keep it together. Okay, so this would be our complete ionic equation. We have separated everything into ions as much as we can. And so now... Uh, in the uh, the net ionic equation, when you write your net ionic equation, the idea there is you're removing the spectator ions. And the spectator ions are the ions that are not involved in any reaction. So there's a couple of ways you could do that. You could look at the products and see, okay, what ions form the product? So here we have a product, uh, copper, salt, uh, copper two salt, sulfide. Um, what ions form that product? We have copper two there right and we have sulfide there so both of those are involved in the product so those would stay those are not spectator ions and we can look at the same for your weak acid so to form this you got your hydrogen your h2 your h plus i mean and so that came from there and you have your acetate ion that came from there so that those are involved so those are not spectator ions Another way you could do it is, is by looking at both sides of your equation, the reactant side and the product side, and see what stays the same. If you have something that stays the same and doesn't change at all, then it's not participating in any reaction. And so therefore, it would be a spectator ion and you get rid of it. So if we look here at copper 2 plus, notice that copper 2 plus is aqueous over here, but now it's part of a solid there. That's a change. So that is not a spectator ion. We could look at the acetate ion too, and we could look here and say, oops, I forgot to write AQ for aqueous. So we could see here that the two acetate ions are aqueous, but over here, they're actually, the acetate ion is not separated. It's not uh, part of, it's not floating around by itself. So here we have the C2H3O2 minus aqueous. Here we don't have the C2H2H3O2 minus. Here we have the molecule, the acetic acid. So that is a change. So, uh, so that is not a spectator ion. H2S gas, we don't have it over here. So that's a change, right? So uh, what you notice here that um, there are no spectator ions. So in this case, the, uh, the net ionic equation is the same as your complete ionic equation. So your net ionic equation same as your complete ionic equation so there you go so i hope this was helpful if you enjoyed this video if you learned something from it if i helped you understand then please like the video subscribe to my channel hit that notification bell so you'll be notified by other videos i will be putting out um, Put a comment in the comment section so you can let me know what you think and uh, ask me questions. Thanks for joining me and 
Have a great day.